Next to Canada, where well, wildfires have burned up more than 10 million hectares of land, an area equivalent to the size of Iceland. The figures released by the government have surpassed scientists' pr predictions. More than 150,000 people have been displaced, while a 19-year-old firefighter died on Thursday trying to quench the flames. The majority of fires have burned far from inhabited areas, but there are still serious consequences for the environment. Well, for more on this story, we can speak to Christina Dahel, a principal climate scientist in the Climate and Energy Programme at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Christina, thanks for joining us on the programme. Um, there are currently 906 active fires in Canada, including 570, which are deemed to be out of control. No province has been spared. Um, why are wildfires getting so bad in Canada? Well, there are a few factors that are influencing wildfires in Canada and really around the world as well. So one big one, though, is climate change. So as our climate is warming, we are tending to dry out our forests and that makes them easier to burn. And so we're seeing fires grow larger. We're seeing them uh, burn for a longer period of the year and we're seeing them burn more severely as well. There are other factors that influence fires as well. So across North, North America, we have been suppressing fires or putting them out as soon as they start or as soon as we can for over a century. And that's led to a lot of buildup of undergrowth in our forests that makes the severity and size of fires much, much worse. And um, you published a report recently which found that forest fires can be attributed to emissions from some of the uh, largest fuel, fossil fuel producers and cement manufacturers. Um, how can we help, hold them accountable for their impact? Yeah, there are a lot of things we can do. So in our study, we looked at emissions from the world's 88 largest fossil fuel producers and cement okay, manufacturers. I don't think so I do. yeah. Organizations like ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, BP, and we found that their emissions were um, a contribution to about 40% of the burned area across Western North America over the last 30 years or so. So when we think about who is responsible for these fires, who needs to pay for preventing them, for um, suppressing them, for recovering after them, we do need to be looking to the fossil fuel industry to be paying their fair share. And we can do that in a lot of different ways, but a lot of communities, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of communities are turning to the courts and suing these companies for damages. And what can politicians do? What sort of policy <clears throat> changes can be made? Yeah, so politicians can be investigating past instances of disinformation and deceit based on these companies' public statements. So we know that for decades, these huge corporations have launched campaigns and operated these campaigns to deceive the public about the causes and consequences of climate change. So over the past 50 years, they have very well known what the consequences of burning their products would be, but they have continuously pumped out different information to the public and obstructed any action on climate change from very local levels to international levels. And so our politicians can be investigating what these companies knew, when they knew it, and what the consequences have been. Christina Dahel, a Principal Climate Scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you for your insight. Thanks for having me.